Hello. Hello my friends, it's Nina. Welcome. Today we are baking. Today I was in a baking mood and I decided I'm going to bake banana bread. I have a bunch of bananas. They are about to go. Recently I went grocery shopping safely and while I was grocery shopping, I figured I should actually get baking ingredients so I could bake instead of wishing that I could bake and seeing everyone else bake. So although I'm baking banana bread and although I have all the ingredients, the only problem to this entire situation is that I don't have a loaf pan. Instead of a loaf pan, I'm bringing this bad boy out. <laughs> oh no, this actually isn't clean. I'm going to quickly wash this. It's all clean now, but this is what I'm going to be baking with. We're basically going to make mini banana muffins. Are banana muffins and banana bread the same recipe? They should be. While I bake, I also decided I'm going to do a Q&A. I haven't done a Q&A in a very long time. I asked you guys for your questions on Instagram a couple weeks back and then I forgot about it but then y'all reminded me about it so that's why we were doing that today am I good at multitasking? not really but we're going to make this happen without further delay Let's make some banana bread. So first off, I'm going to read out the ingredients for the recipe. This recipe calls for two cups of flour, one teaspoon baking soda, one teaspoon baking powder, one teaspoon salt, two eggs, one cup of sugar, four ripe bananas, one teaspoon vanilla, half a cup of vegetable oil, and one teaspoon cinnamon. I realized I don't have tablespoons or teaspoons. I'm going to make do with two sizes of spoons. Also, another thing, I don't have vegetable oil. I have olive oil, but this is very extra. Extra light. This is ideal for frying, cooking, and baking. I also read online that some people use olive oil in their recipes for baking. They say it gives a nice flavor. This is extra light. I don't think there should be a problem, but I'm going to get started now. I'm going to wash my hands. I believe in myself. I think this will work out. Another thing about using a miniature muffin pan is that it will actually bake faster. The actual recipe says to bake for an hour, which I don't have the time for. But with that, we only have to bake for 10 to 15 minutes. So I think I'm doing something here. Let's do this. I technically should tie my hair, but I don't have a scrunchie. So we're going to preheat the oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Not Celsius, that'd be extremely hot. This is the first time I'm using this oven. Not the stove, I use the stove every day, but the oven, I actually haven't used it yet. Hopefully nothing goes wrong. I don't know how to use this. Bake, 350, start. I think I did it. So in a medium bowl, combine the flour, baking soda, baking powder, and salt. <laughs> Please, this won't open. Once I get you to open up, I'm gonna get the flour. Wow, my dog is up and about. She took a nap. I'm going to get two cups of flour. <laughs> the oven's done preheating. <laughs> There's flour all over the air. I actually used to like baking. It's just lately I haven't had the time to do it. When I was younger, when I was like 17, 18, I really loved baking. I would make macarons, I would make cookies, but now I'm back to being a beginner. I think that's a good cup. You can't even see what I'm doing. One more cup of flour, two cups. I can actually, I can put the flour away. One teaspoon of baking soda and baking powder. This is not technically a teaspoon, but if I can remember what a teaspoon looks like, I can wing this. That's, this isn't working. Let me scoop you out. <gasps> is this a teaspoon? I'll say that it is. There's no going back now. Then we've got a teaspoon of baking powder. more. There we go. One teaspoon salt. I have this salt. I'm just gonna go for it as well. Oh, this is a bad idea. I'm gonna put it in here. That should be good. I'm actually kind of nervous. I didn't really measure out the teaspoons and baking soda and baking powder is kind of the chemistry part of baking. The thing that makes everything work and react. I really hope this works. And then once this is together, I can get into the wet ingredients. So how are you guys doing this fine afternoon? Ah, I see. I'm just realizing this might make a lot of banana bread, actually. Actually, I'm going to be having a lot of mini muffins. I think a good thing about this is that you can pop them in the freezer and they can last for a good while. And you can just reheat them again. My mind is just so big. I'm kind of nervous. I want to know how big a teaspoon is. I use this. None. I think tall, right? This is really flat. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, bro. <laughs> Uh, I don't think you can go wrong putting yeah. too much, right? I feel like it'll go wrong if it's not enough. It's too much taste, Peter. Really? Yeah. Uh, but, 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 but
Well, that will not make yeah. I'm so nervous. Now I'm moving on to the wet ingredients. Huh. Huh. Maybe I should have tied my hair. In a large bowl, cream together the eggs and sugar on a flat surface. People like to do it on the edge of a bowl. That's not really safe to do. Eggshells can get inside the egg. And then one more egg. A whole cup of sugar? Oh my gosh, that's so much sugar. But this is also a sweet recipe, I should have known. I'm going to put in one cup of sugar. Oh no. Is that even safe to consume? In goes the sugar. I am now going to cream this. Can't really see it. Never mind. Now that that's done, I should have mashed my bananas first. I don't have another bowl. <laughs> It's okay, this just means I have to do dishes, which is fine. I have a bowl here, I'm going to mash up some bananas. I'm going to open it. That smell is very strong. In goes one banana, three more to go. We have our bananas, we're going to mash them. Actually, before I get into that, I'm just going to put in the rest of the wet ingredients before I forget. So a teaspoon of vanilla. This is brand new vanilla. I'm gonna put in a good amount. It says a teaspoon. <gasps> That should be good. The cinnamon also calls for a teaspoon. I like how everything is actually easy to remember. Everything's a teaspoon, half a cup, one cup or two cups. I also can't really measure this, so I'm just going to eyeball it. In Asian cooking, we don't use measurements. We use our intuition. That should be good. Here's the mixture. And then finally, half a cup of oil. There is a half cup going in. I'm going to get started on the Q&A. The first question is, any languages you want to learn apart from Korean and any sites you recommend for using Korean? So as you guys know, I am Korean American, but I don't speak Korean that well. Now I'm kind of almost intermediate, I would think. I can kind of speak in conversations now, but there's a whole lot of vocabulary that I still need to learn so that I just sound more proficient. The things that I can say in Korean are very simple, but apart from learning Korean, I also do want to learn Japanese. I tried studying the Japanese characters, but it's a little bit difficult, but I would like to get back into that when I can. Other languages I want to learn, I want to get back into Spanish. I took Spanish classes for three years in high school, and then I took a course in college. I feel like I'm better at Korean than I am with Spanish now, which is saying something. Maybe eventually even French. You guys as my viewers are very international and so I just want to learn a lot of languages. Hopefully I get better at Korean so I can move on. And any sites that I recommend for using Korean, I've mentioned it a lot in videos in the past, but I use howtostudykorean.com. I used to use Talk To Me In Korean. Those are the top two that I use. Next question is how do you overcome social anxiety while in college, senior in high school, going next year. So college was very fast paced. You're kind of just like expected to catch up and keep up. Sometimes I felt overwhelmed, especially because a lot of times you would have to work with people that you literally have never met. So you kind of were expected to be strong, be able to be in these situations. They want people that are able to adapt to whatever place, whatever situation, people who can take on a leadership role or people who can take part in group things, big things. So the setting of college is already just overwhelming. I personally went through a lot of growth and so by the time that I was able to apply for college after community college and transfer, I was much more sure of myself. But there were a lot of times where we had to participate in discussions with new people and actually work in group projects with people you'd never met. The way that I dealt with it is I really just had to be the one to tell myself that I'm going to be okay and remind myself that everyone is kind of just there to get through it. No one's really judging me or trying to be mean or anything like that. Oops, battery's about to die. My social anxiety stems from feeling like people are going to judge what I'm saying or that I'm going to say the wrong thing. So I had to kind of learn to tell myself that people are not judging you, which is kind of true, especially in big lecture settings. You see pretty much new people every single day and in a college setting, everyone's really busy that they don't really have time to kind of think about you, but someone has to be there to tell yourself that you're going to be okay and that person has to be you. I have to remember to breathe in, breathe out. I remember to keep an approachable face, which basically just means a smile. You don't have to go through great lengths 
to change yourself or anything but I realized that a little smile just makes the other person feel comfortable that's what I learned I have a video on how I dealt with social anxiety and all that but it really is about being a friend to yourself and telling yourself that things will pass people are temporary everyone kind of comes and goes we're all just busy don't sweat it too much but yeah college was a very fast paced kind of overwhelming setting but that's kind of what I signed up for which is kind of sad because it's like anyone who can't really deal with that kind of gets left out which sucks so basically I had to fake it till I made it I had to pretend that oh I'm good at working in groups I'm good at meeting people for the first time I'm good at holding conversations I kind of had to lie to myself and eventually it kind of became a truth I eventually did become better at having a leadership role especially when I worked in groups I would kind of take the initiative sometimes so my best advice is just faking it till you make it you'd be surprised but a lot of people are feeling the same way that you do going through the same things as you feeling the same ways but we just pretend that we're okay and that we're doing well there's something kind of comforting in that well yeah be a friend to yourself all these negative thoughts can pile on top of each other and then you lose yourself and then you really panic and feel anxious remember to hold on to yourself and just make sure that you're good don't forget to breathe it's a whole topic but I explained it in another video I'm going to put in the banana did you see that this looks promising next question is what do you do when you feel unmotivated when I feel unmotivated I try to take things slow and do one thing at a time. I will start out with my morning routine. Sometimes I don't feel like putting on makeup, but that doesn't mean I can't do my skincare and wash up and take care of myself that way. After I do my skincare, I will try to do something else. Maybe I'll tidy up my room or start my laundry. Just one simple small little task will kind of lead to another. I also remember to relax because you don't have to be doing something all the time. You don't have to be productive all the time. You don't have to be doing something at all times. Sometimes you just need a break. Sometimes you just need to rest and that can be very healing. Do something that you love, whether that's playing a video game, watching a movie, listening to some songs, do something that makes you happy. I think the most important thing is making sure that you're taking care of your health whether that's physical or mental. It's hard to kind of do anything when you're not feeling good. That's why I personally like to tidy up my environment because that makes me feel better. Even if it's hard to do, personally for me, I just know that's going to make me feel better if my space is less cluttered. That can be as simple as throwing away trash or making your bed. And then don't forget to do hobbies. Don't forget to do things you like. That can be very productive because you're taking care of yourself by making yourself happier. Remember to eat. Remember to drink water. Stay hydrated. That's kind of what I do when I'm not feeling motivated. I just realize sometimes I need a break. Sometimes I need to rest. Sometimes I need to actually feel better before I do something else. By the way, I'm just slowly adding in the dry mixture. Just slowly because you don't want to overwhelm the mixture. I'm putting in the rest of the flour. We're almost there. We've got a nice cohesive mixture. I'm now going to spoon this mixture in. I am first going to wash my hands. I'm just going to spray it. Whoop, six inches. <gasps> that was too much. This is actually not stick, so I don't know why I'm doing this, but precaution. I'm going to just take a paper towel and kind of mix it all in there. If you can see it, I am spooning the mixture into this pan. How were you named Nina? Great question. So my dad was actually a bit of a gamer back in the day. He loved the game Tekken. He used to participate in Tekken tournaments and all that. So I am actually named after a character in the video game. There is a character named Nina, Nina Williams, and that's where my name came from. And a fun fact is that my little brother, who is a year younger than me, his name is Jin, not Jin from BTS, but his name comes from Jin Kazama, who is also a Tekken character. You can kind of see the pattern here. And then I have a baby brother who is 13.5 years younger than me. And his first name's actually not from a game character, but his Korean name, Horang, is based on a Tekken character. So that is the origin of me. I also just think my parents thought the name was cute. I think so too. They did well. If it's not too invasive, have you ever been in a relationship? I have not. I have never had a partner and that's okay. It's not something I ever really sought out. And so that's why I'm like this. It also requires socializing and getting yourself out there, which I don't really have the biggest interest in. Would I be open to a relationship though? Maybe, but I like 
posting on my own schedule. And also, social distancing. The batter is actually all gone, you guys. Here is the batter up close. I didn't fill out a row because I ran out of batter. I have my mitts on. We're going to do this. I'm going to just slide it in. There we go. Bake, my friends. The banana bread is in. Polo, come to me. Hello. You smell the banana? <laughs> hi. Marco also wanted to say hi. Hello. So after about a minute, I remembered to set up a timer. I set it for 12 minutes, so in total it should be about 13 minutes once done. Uh-oh, they're rising a lot. <laughs> I'm nervous. I should have maybe filled them less. They're going to be like, Boop. So getting back to the Q&A, how did I get my start on YouTube and what's your favorite thing about being on the platform? I just liked YouTube. I would watch it all the time ever since I got social media, which was 2013. I got my first smartphone in around 2013. So I wasn't always on the internet and then I found YouTube and I found all these vloggers and YouTubers and was interested in the content. I felt less lonely. It was kind of fun to watch. And eventually I was just like, I kind of want to do it as well. I really didn't think Think of it as anything serious at the time i didn't even know about monetization or anything like that i didn't really have a dream to be a youtuber i just wanted to do it for fun i was i don't even know how old i was i was 16 17 and so i just put up videos for fun they were literally for fun i would just do tags and challenges with my friends and then eventually around 2016 or 2017 it started to pick up a little bit for some reason people were more interested and invested in the videos that i made a lot of them i really just they didn't make sense either they would just be like little clips or film short film projects then i started thinking about making more serious content and it just went from there i am incredibly thankful that anything ever really happened with my channel and the fact that i have an audience and i think that is what i love the most about having a youtube channel and my favorite thing about being on the platform is that i have you guys that i have friends but when i started i really didn't think of it as anything i didn't even think that i would do youtube for so long when i was in community college i actually started to think about maybe not continuing it not something like dramatic but i was very inactive and i didn't really it just wasn't a consistent thing so i thought i would just like kind of disappear it was back when i had maybe 20,000 subscribers or so but then some of my videos would take off and i just kept going with that so it really is kind of like strange to think that i almost didn't keep going with this and it wasn't anything dramatic it was just like oh i don't really you know i'm going to college i'm about to transfer to uc berkeley i'm going to be busy things like that but i just vlogged my life at uc berkeley and other things i got into fashion videos and other things and took it more seriously and it just went from there i think the most important thing about it is just having interest in it and knowing what kind of content you want to put up and just being your genuine self because if you're being your real self and if you're making content that you actually care about then it's all just kind of natural so that's just kind of how it all happened timer is up i am going to check on the muffins they rose i think i did okay they look good also another thing i want to mention if you want to add nuts or chocolate chips or any kind of filling topping other ingredients go right ahead but i just made my plan because i wanted to see how it actually turned out oh my god they're so cute I'm going to take a toothpick and I'm going to stab one of these. If it comes out clean, that means it's done. I can't tell if that's clean. I mean, it doesn't feel... It feels dry inside. <gasps> I took one out. Maybe I could... Ow, 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 it's hot, it's hot, it's hot, it's hot. I took one out. Oh my god, it's hot, it's hot. I took one out. Look how cute it is. It's a little baby. I have a little plate. Here is the banana muffin. It's so small and cute. I'm going to open it. That will be a better test of whether it's done or not. It's gonna be really hot. Oh, wow. <gasps> Ooh, that is beautiful. I'm going to give you a close-up. Here is the inside. It is steaming. I'm kind of nervous because I had to wing a lot of the measurements. Oh, oh my god. Oh, I really popped off actually. <laughs> that is so good. Okay, but I can't really go wrong if I follow the recipe. But I'm surprised for myself because I had to wing a lot of the measurements. I also love the size. It's just so cute and convenient. I am so proud of myself. 
Wash, chef's kiss. I am going to take the rest out. I don't have a cooling rack because I don't bake. I have this little contraption. This is actually used for grilling fish. These muffins taste delightful. I'm going to kind of take them out. They nicely rose. Here's one right here. Nice golden brown, nice and round on the top. There it goes with its friends. I'll show you right now. Here are the completed muffins. I'm so happy with how they turned out. Look at how beautiful she is. Just gonna wash the grease off my hands. I think I will just answer a few more questions, maybe nibble on these. Pineapple on pizza, yes or no? I personally don't mind pineapple on pizza. I was about to speak Korean for a second. So I don't eat pizza a lot, but I used to. But pizza can be greasy, it can be salty. So to kind of cut out the greasiness and the saltiness, I just think that pineapple on pizza makes sense. Why is my battery always dying? To cut out the saltiness and the greasiness of pizza, I think adding pineapple is a nice touch. It's tart, it's sweet, it's acidic. So I think it's just naturally a nice combination with cheese. But also I haven't had pineapple on pizza for a really long time. But back when I ate it, I actually did enjoy it because I love the mix of the flavors but some people are against it and that's okay people have different tastes do you play any instruments is mayonnaise an instrument <laughs> I actually don't really like mayonnaise. So I used to actually study piano. I studied piano for a good amount of years. I think it was like maybe four or three, four. It was a good amount of my adolescence actually, but I never really was good at it because I didn't have hand-eye coordination. I also forgot. I actually used to study violin as well. That only happened for a year or two. I never picked up on that either. I wish I did, but I quit. And then I have a ukulele right now, but I don't really play it a lot. I do know some chords so I can play songs occasionally. My ukulele's name is Agnes. But do I play any instruments? Currently, not really. I'm not a musical person. I guess I just play ukulele casually. Ukulele? How did you bring yourself to do something as meaningful and big as YouTube and sharing actual content? I did not ever think it was going to be big, or at least bigger. I'm not the biggest person on the internet, but I certainly did not expect to get to where I am now. As I mentioned before, I literally almost stopped because I didn't think I was going to continue on but I just always knew I liked storytelling or I liked creating something. I was always an artistic person. I liked drawing, I liked writing stories, I liked making up scenarios and things like that. I liked making skits and just entertaining people in those kinds of ways even if I was very timid and reserved. I liked creating something and YouTube was just that platform. And even what I studied in college, media studies and almost film studies, I still always was interested in that creative process and creating things for people to watch because I love media, I consume it, I learn from it, I engage with it, we all engage with it. Media is the way it is now and it's meaningful and it's big because of people's participation, because people care about these videos, people share these videos, not just videos but music, movies, TV shows, anything. We share it and we engage with it and that's why it's so big and meaningful because we make meaning out of it and that's always been something interesting to me. So that's why I think naturally with YouTube I just kept going with it because it was naturally something that I love. I think naturally everything just fell into place but I did not expect the audience that I have now and it's just really cool. I'm very thankful. Do I dislike my past self? Why? I don't. I don't dislike my past self because that past self led me to where I am today. If I wasn't my past self, I could have been very different from who I am today. I don't really like to think backwards <laughs> because everything just kind of fell into place and happened and kept going. So I don't want to kind of replace my past with something else. I mean, obviously, do I wish I was less insecure about things? Do I wish I was more secure about myself, happier, things like that? Of course, but I don't don't dislike who I was. I had good times in the past and I had fun and stuff like that. My past self was me and I'm me right now. And this version of me is going to be a past version of myself in the future, years from now. Kind of wild, but you're constantly changing. And so it's kind of weird to think about. <laughs> but yeah, that was just a stage of my life and that was a part of my life. And I don't want to neglect that or throw that away. That was yesterday's me. This is today's me. There's going to be a tomorrow's me. It's all of me and I can't really hate that. What is life? That is a good question that only you know the answer to. It sounded deeper in my head. First kiss. 
Next, do you put milk before or after cereal? Now there's actually a logical theory behind this. This all depends on what you want more. Do you want cereal or do you want milk? Personally, I like cereal. So I put cereal first because I can put a lot of cereal. And then I put milk in after so I can splash the cereal with milk. That's my own personal taste. If you put milk in first, you have a lot of milk. And then when you put the cereal on top, due to the natural laws of physics, the cereal is going to float on top of the milk. It's not going to go in unless you really like pound it down there. But naturally it's going to float and there's not going to be enough room for cereal. So you have more milk than cereal. But maybe it's because you want more milk than cereal. And I guess I respect that. Everyone makes different choices, but personally I put cereal in before milk. That was a really long explanation. Also, if you do put in a little bit of milk and then put cereal on top, all that milk's on the bottom and the cereal on top is still dry. So you kind of have to like dig through it. So that's why I like splashing in the milk after the cereal. So the top's kind of moist and wet. So then I could just eat from the top to the bottom. I should be in a debate club. Actually, no, I'm done with my education. That would not make sense. And then I think this will be the final question because I've answered a lot of questions. I will definitely do more in the future. But the last question is, can you touch your nose with your tongue? I am so glad you asked. Let me just drink some water first. I have actually showed this in a Q&A before, but I'll do it again. So here we go. Did you see that? I can do other things with my tongue, but my tongue is actually kind of cramping, so maybe next time. I also did do it in a past video, so you can watch it there. There. I can lick my elbow and then I can do that clover cluster tongue. But that is it for this baking video and Q&A. I am so happy with how this turned out. I'm actually going to finish the rest of this muffin. That is going to be it for the video. I hope you enjoyed this time to catch up. I hope maybe you learned something from this video or just enjoyed me baking. Thank you for watching and for being here and really just for being part of my life. And I will see you in my next video. We're going to conclude it with a virtual hug. I will see you in my next video. Goodbye, my friends.